Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new build video with me Sherman. Today we're going to be taking a look at my Stan Sork build that I play. I It is nothing like the, the typical meta Stan Sork and that's because uh, one of the reasons why it's not is because it is not a end game build. It is a solo small group play build. Uh, it's made for dungeons and, and stuff like that. It's not made for trials. And even though it does work in trials uh, just fine and normal and that both. Um, I just don't play it a lot in trials because I don't really play a lot of trials uh, to the extent of a, what other people do. I play through them to experience them and that's pretty much it. And uh, I just haven't seen a need to experience it with this character yet so I just haven't done it. So it's a really fun build. It's a really kind of easy build to put together. Now the hardest part is the monster set. So let's go ahead and take a look at the build itself. Starting with the stats, you can see we have 64 in the stamina. Now, <coughs> I might actually adjust this, to be honest, the, the attributes so I can get a little bit more health in there. <coughs> Excuse me, got a little bit of a frog in my throat. But as you can see, I have a 13k Magicka, 17k uh, health, and a 34k stamina. I do run tri-stat food for a reason, and that's because a lot of my buffs are magic based so I need that that extra there um, well not all of my buffs just a few of my buffs uh, and next up is <coughs> 17k health almost almost <laughs> uh, uh, I wish it was more 18k and 34k stamina and my weapon damage is 2857 uh, I do have a 60% crit it is uh, it isn't the highest that it could possibly be, but, it, but it's pretty good. Uh, my resistances are kind of low, but that's okay because I do buff up and get a greater uh, resistances out of it. If I scroll down, you can see I do have the Thief Munda Stone. I do have Minor Resolve from my Bound Armaments. And I do have my Major Savagery from Evil Hunter, which is from the, uh, the Fighter Skill. On top of that, I am running, like I said, uh, Tristat Food. And... I, I do run Tristat food with this character mainly for the purpose I do want to have my Magicka. It would be better if I would have went with um, Stamina f Health food, but I do need that that just that extra um, Magicka, and I'll explain why. A lot of the abilities I use are, are Stamina based, but I keep up one ability all the time and that's my Crit Surge, so I need that extra Magicka for that purpose. So let's go ahead and take a look at the gear I run. Now I don't run the normal gear that most meta run again <laughs> so it is it is different it is set apart from that it's to it, it's to, to give the community more than just what's offered so starting with the monster set we are running a two-piece storm fist set now we have a heavy helm it is not in the exact setting i'd like i would prefer a divines here but i'm fine with reinforced and i would prefer a divines here which is prosperous the, the, this this set is not an easy one to come by um and this is my light and heavy pieces. The rest is all medium. But the reason I run this set is because one, I'm a Sork. And it does 100 or 1,882 shock damage on the second piece with a uh, every second for three seconds. And then it does this closing hand thing that does physical damage. Well, Sorks get both shock and physical damage bonuses. And this really plays well with the Sork in any kind of build you're playing. So... And you do get that 5% bonus, both the shock and, and physical damage. And it, it does carry over in the champion points. I'll explain that as well uh, when I get to it. So next up, we are running a 5-piece Hunting's Rage on the uh, rest of the gear. It's all uh, the... Well, not all of it. <laughs> uh, but we are running a 5-piece Hunting's here, 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 and here. And as you can see, it's all Divines. I am wearing a one-piece Lucky's Belt that's Divines, but that's because uh, originally I was going to go with two Lucky Swords, or with a Lucky Sword and then a Hunting's Rage Sword, because it was going to dual wield. But I found two-handed works a lot better with the Stam Sork. And I'll get to that in a second. Our next five-piece, or three-piece set is the Agility set. And that's where we get our max stamina from and our extra weapon damage. That's why our weapon damage is actually at 2857. And when we buff up, it goes up a lot higher. So at, for a weapon, we actually are running the Hunting's Rage weapon, two-handed. And I do have mine more uh, skinned into the Ice Sword, because I, I just I think it's really cool looking. So, <laughs> um, But I went with this, and it's sharpened. Because of the fact that it's it's just so much more powerful with the two-handed when you when you do damage. Um, 
Also, just to point out, it does have shock damage on it and not weapon and spell damage increase. The reason why is because of that increased damage potential that Sorks get with shock damage. Any shock damage you do, you get plus 5%. Um, and it does uh, get an additive bonus from your champion points. Next up, I'm running a Hunting's Rage Bow, uh, also crafted. And it is purple, and it also has shock damage on it as well, and is sharpened. Uh, like I said, it's, there's a big reason why I run this build the way I do, and it's because of the way it works. Um, in kind of in unison with everything else. So it's it's a really powerful just class anyways. Because he gets plus 5% to physical damage and plus 5% to shock damage. So that means any bow ability I use that does physical damage, not poison damage, physical damage gets increased by 5%. Any two-handed weapon damage I do that's physical damage gets increased by 5%. Any shock damage I do gets increased by 5%. So, and it does carry, like I said, into the champion points. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the champion points just real quick to show you guys what I'm talking about. So if you were to put into Elemental Expert just enough to give you 5%, it you would actually get 10% more damage from shock even on a stamina build. But I'm not, I don't have mine set up that way. Just, just letting you guys know. Let's go ahead and take a look at the skills. So on the main bar, we are running Carve. Now this is the two-handed ability um, that basically gives you minor heroism, so it gives you ultimate generation. Uh, this build is not a built around ultimate generation, but it is nice to have it. You also get a bleed with this, which is really nice. It does. Uh, they did increase the damage of the bleed. And all uh, light and heavy attacks with this weapon do cleave now, so it hits multiple targets. It hits three targets more. And I'll just show you guys with the two-handed what, what I mean. Uh, is forceful. And I do 70% more damage with my light and heavy attacks to th up to three targets. So it almost does 100% of my damage to the targets. It's a powerful, powerful thing. Um, next up we have Carve. Or not Carve. Uh, sorry, Reverse Slice. Now I went with Reverse Slice because it hits other enemies for 88% of the damage that I inflict to the main target. Now I should have went. I could have went with Executioner Strike, but I still get the Execute from the 300% more damage on enemies below 50% health. So I still get the Execute. It's just not as high of an Execute, which is fine because I hit multiple targets. This is a really good AOE build, by the way. Next up, we have Wrecking Blow. Very, very, very powerful hit. And what I do is I usually start with Carve to get that Ultimate Generation going, and jump right into a Reverse Slice on the enemy. Or not a reverse slice, sorry, a wrecking blow on the enemy, and then I reverse slice them. And then I go through and I hit rec uh, carve, wrecking blow, reverse slice, and then I have other abilities on my back bar. Next up we have Evil Hunter. Now the reason I took Evil Hunter is to increase my weapon critical. I didn't want to use a potion for this, I didn't want to use some other, you know, thing for it. I just wanted to get, have it permanently to where I don't have to cast anything. So it's a really nice buff for your character. It also helps in PvP. I know it sounds weird, but it really helps in PvP. If you want to expose stealth characters, this helps do that. Next up, we have Bound Armaments. Now, Bound Armaments, as you can see, increases my max stamina by 8% and the damage of done of my heavy attacks by 11%. This is a very, very powerful thing for anyone running a two-handed because you get the most damage from a heavy attack from two-handed uh, even j just by a small margin over dual wheel. Next up we are running Flawless Dawnbreaker to increase our weapon damage by 5% but also because of the damage it does. As you can see it does 12,006 physical damage according to the tooltip and 12,510 over 5 seconds. So it's a really nice good single hit and then damage over time. So really really powerful. Next up on the back bar, now this is where things get a little weird because I don't, like I said, I don't run the meta, but I do this for a certain reason. I am running sharpened weapons, and on top of that, I need a way to increase the damage capability of my character by breaking the armor of the enemy. And this is why I use focused aim, is because it does put minor fracture on the enemy, reducing their physical resistance by 1320, but it also hits like a bus. So it hits for 13, uh, two, uh, 246 according to the, the tooltip. I am a wood elf, by the way. Um, so I do get increased bow experience, but that's just for leveling purposes. But it is a very, very, very powerful thing. And also when you hit him with this, the, you, you get a 5 meter range increase to your bow abilities. So it's really nice. Arrow Barrage. A lot of people like running... Uh, 
is it, uh, I forget what it's called, but they like to run the other morph of this. I like this one because it covers a greater radius and it does the same amount of damage uh, in the same, you know, with a little bit less time, but it does, it does cover a greater area. So it's really nice in dungeon play. Next up we have Hurricane. Of course, what Stam Sork doesn't have Hurricane? And this is the thing that increases your resistances. It also increases your movement speed by 10%. And if you look, it also does damage over time. So it's a really powerful ability. So next up we have Critical Surge uh, to increase our weapon damage by 20% and also to heal us. Because a lot of times when you're in a dungeon or a trial, and I know a lot of people are like, well, then your healer's done doing their job. But it's not a matter of the healer doing their job. It's the fact that they have to aim now with a lot of their heals. So it's good to have a heal for yourself. Next up, we also have Bound Armaments again and Flawless Dawnbreaker again. Now, the reason why we have Flawless Dawnbreaker on the back bar is that 5% weapon damage. Because if you look here, I have a 26-28 weapon damage. And then if I flip bars, it only goes, it goes up by, you know, a little over 100 and something uh, points between the two weapons. I like to keep that high weapon damage. And so let's go ahead and see what I look like buffed up. This is my buff. I have 3,045 weapon damage on the bow bar with a 55% critical. When I switch, I have a 3,314 weapon damage with a 60% critical. And uh, yeah, it really does play on it. So <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at the build in action. I'll show you guys the rotation I run. Oops, I hate when I do that. <laughs> So let's go ahead and give it a second. So we're going to buff uh, both Hurricane and this. We're going to hit with this guy with Snipe, Arrow Barrage, Carve, Wrecking Blow, Reverse Slice. And then, as you guys can see, uh, most of the time they're dead before I even get anything further beyond that on most enemies in the outside world. I can solo play this build, like, everywhere in the game. It's kind of crazy. Um... Which is really nice because of the, the, the amount of solo play you get. But as you guys saw, that hand that came in and started crushing the enemy, that is just one really OP uh, thing. And especially on trash, like if you're over here and you're fighting, we'll just grab a few of these guys up. I'm going to go ahead and buff up and, and stuff. But I'm not going to drop my hurricane just yet. I want to get down over here. And I'm going to drop my hurricane. And there we go. So if you watch... Every one of those enemies got hit by that fist. Um, and that's the reason why I use it, is because it hits multiple targets. It's not a single target kind of thing. And it's really just really powerful. So, now let's go take a look at the champion point allocation. Because this is where a lot of people have a difference of opinion. So, this is a good thing. So let's take a look at champion point allocation. We're going to start with the fighters, or the warrior tree. I have 23 into Ironclad, giving me 10% damage reduction from direct damage. As you can see, I have one point in the Spell Shield. I didn't have a place to put this extra point, so I threw it here. Next up, <coughs> we have 43 into Hardy, 43 into Elemental Defender. As you can see, it gives us 10% damage reduction in both Flame, Frost, Shock, and Magic damage, along with Physical Poison and Disease. This does stack with, with the... Um, Ironclad, it also stacks with Thick Skin, which I have 23 points on, in, and that reduces the damage you take from damage over time effects. As you can see, I have nothing into uh, armor resistances and stuff, and that's because the the way the build's set up. Next up, I have 16 into Expert Defender, another 10% from Light and Heavy Attack damage. Most enemies in the game do Light and Heavy Attack, so this is another way to reduce the damage you take. And then 43 into Quick Recovery. I did this so I can increase my healing received. Not just from my crit surge, but also from healers uh, as well. I can get a lot of healing out of my character. But when my crit surge does heal, it keeps me healed all the time. So, really nice thing to have that. As you can see, I do have some spare champion points, which I do plan on pointing, putting into spell shield and medium armor focus. But just enough to get it a little extra. That's, that's it, really. So moving on to the green tree, <coughs> we have 23 into Warlord, which reduces our cost of break free by 10%. We have 16 into Sprinter, which reduces our cost of Sprint by 10%. And that's the nice thing about the new champion point system, is everything's so front loaded, you can really get away with putting a lot of points everywhere. So, but th this 10% in both of these really help, especially if you're wearing medium armor, you, get, you already get a reduced cost of sprinting. This reduces the cost by another 10%, which really helps. 
Moving on to this the middle tree here. We have 43 in the moon count increasing our stamina recovery by 10%. I am a wood elf so I get 20% and since I am a sork I get another percentage of stamina recovery for having uh, bound armaments on my bar. And so I have like a 40% stamina recovery uh, and that's why I, can, I have such a high stamina recovery without any stamina recovery stuff on my character. Next up we have 43 in the Tenaxi. This is just something everyone needs to put into now, no offense, but it, it is because your heavy attacks give you 30% of your resource return now. On top of that it gives you another 10% with this, so it's 40%. So it's really nice to have that greater amount return. Next we have 56 in the Tumbling. Now the reason I put 56 in the Tumbling is to reduce my dodge roll by 20%. Now if you guys don't know, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. With medium armor, down here, the bottom pot pass of uh, uh, athletics, you uh, you get a, another 20% reduced cost in dodge rolling. So my dodge roll reduced cost is 40%. As you can see, it barely uses any of my my stamina. And that's if I can wait out the timer of 6 seconds. If I can't, it does use a greater ch a chunk, but it's not as big as it used to be. It's 40% reduced, so it's really, really good. Um, and allows me more maneuverability in dungeons and trials. So going back in here, <coughs> I did put 11 in a shadow ward for now to give me 5% block cost reduction because I do block and I don't like wasting stamina for it, so this helps me not waste so much. On to the next tree, as you can see, nothing in the, the, the apprentice tree, but we do have in the Antaroch, we have 16 in the weapon expert. This is a really good one to just, uh, you can put 16 or 35 in, the, or 36 is it, I think, 35? I think it's 35. Uh, with, with 16, you get 10%, with 35, you get 20%. Um, so I went with 10% because I do do a lot of light and heavy attacks, and this damage does carry over with Master of Arms, so direct damage. So it's actually 30% more damage from my light and heavy attacks. That's a lot. <laughs> so that's why I have 56 points in here is to increase my damage from my light and heavy attacks and my abilities by any direct damage abilities I do by 20%. Next up I have 43 in the mighty. Which again you guys can see increases the damage I do with physical, poison, and disease by 10%. Since I get a 5% bonus to physical I actually get 15%. So any damage I do physically gets increased by 15% now instead of that. So that's why I use the Crushing Fist, or the Storm Fist, Monster Set. Next up I have 20 in the Thaumaturge. I'm going to go ahead and put the exactly that amount into there, which leaves me one point. Um, I remember what I was telling you guys about the, the Mage, the, the, the Sort, getting bonus damage from this. That's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it in there until I can get it up to 5%, which I should be able to do with the remaining points I have. So next up we have Precise Strikes. And Precise Strikes, I have uh, 56 points, increasing my critical damage by 20%. Now I don't have uh, Rearming Trap or the, the trap from Fighter's Guild. And I tried it for a while, but it wasn't giving me the damage potential that I have right now. It was giving me a little bit more, just, I mean, and honestly it wasn't a greater amount as what I was getting from this. And it, it, if I were to change this, Here's the thing, if I were to change this, and I change this out to 10% and put the rest into here, I actually get greater damage than if I were to take the, 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 the rearming trap. So it's like, <laughs> it didn't matter. Um, so I, I leave it like, I'm going to leave it like this. This 10% in, increase in damage over time, because I only use really one ability that's damage over time. Um, so increasing that damage by 10% does help, but it's just, you know, it's there to, to be there. It, it, this build is more single target, more direct damage, more AoE, uh, cleave damage, that kind of thing. It's not just AoE damage, it's cleave damage. So you're, you're going for that greater effect from that. And that is the champion points, and this is the build. And like I said, this build does work really well when you're doing, like, small group play and stuff like that for, for dungeons and everything. Like you said, it can be used in trials. It'd probably work just fine. Um, but it's a matter of your group allowing it, so it is all. It, it, it's a really fun build. It's something I've been playing for about uh, probably two months before, before Morrowind came out. I've been playing this build like this. Um, and then once Morrowind came, I started messing around with this. Um, with the champion points, and I got the champion points exactly where I wanted them for the points I had, so 
yeah, it's a really fun build. Really cool. Uh, to, it, it, it's not just really cool. I mean, to be different, but it's it's just different from the meta. So. So I hope you guys enjoyed this build video. If you guys did, I'd be greatly appreciated if you hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can hit that subscribe button and see when I post videos on YouTube and be notified of it. Other than that, I do post videos on a weekly basis or try to. And right now, I'm going to be posting a lot because Morrowind just dropped. We got a lot of new changes and I've got to make changes to my characters and my builds uh, to bring them to you guys. And this is my actual first one of my own besides my Warden that I brought uh, earlier. So... But yeah, that's it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and I will see you all later. Bye.